lovely people it's Nicole and I was looking through my old videos a little while ago and I noticed that one of my most popular videos is my top 10 standalones which is really old at this point and not super accurate anymore so I thought I would make an updated version. I do still love the vast majority of the books on that list. There were a few that upon looking through the books there I was like dear god what was I thinking. So to start off with I just want to throw in a few honorable mentions. The first one is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. This book it's not like one of my all-time favorites, but I do think it's one of the most incredibly written. It's written entirely in verse, and I'm not normally a books in verse kind of person, but this one was just so well done, and it all takes place in a three minute long elevator ride for the most part. It, the craftsmanship that went into this book is just absolutely incredible. And then the next honorable mention is to Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, which I was so close to putting on the list, and then I remembered that there's a companion book slash sequel coming out this fall, so like yay that we're getting more books, but um can't be my favorite standalone anymore because it's not a standalone anymore. But jumping into the actual list in no particular order, the first one is The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. This is one that was on my list before. It's a childhood favorite. It's about two boys whose parents die and they're supposed to move in with their aunt and uncle who are kind of like not great, little Dursley-ish, but instead they run away to Venice, which is the place that their mom always told them was magical and beautiful and incredible. So they run away and join a group of thieving children and there's a sort of dual perspective between the private detective that their aunt and uncle hire to find them and the kids as they're hired for a mysterious and kind of magical really big theft. Next is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I have loved the movie for a really long time but I just read the book last semester. I actually wrote one of my final papers on it because I loved it so much. It's about a man who's trying to win the heart of his beloved. At one point they see a falling star and she tells him if you fetch me that falling star I will marry you and so he goes across the border into this like fairyland finds the falling star but the falling star is actually a person and so he's trying to get the star back to his beloved but along the way they are dealing with witches and princes and all these different people who want the star for themselves and along the way he also kind of falls in love with the star and it's just so beautiful it really is written like a fairy tale but for adults and it's absolutely incredible next is Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde because like it's best friends at a convention and it's queer. I have never felt so represented by a book. There's a character who's struggling with anxiety, there's a character who's dealing with bisexual drama. It's fun and it's funny and it also deals with like a lot of really good important emotion and it's just an absolute delight. Then I have We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. Last time Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour was on this list, which I also still love. Nina LaCour's writing style just in general is absolutely beautiful. It's so atmospheric and has this beautiful emotion. I'm not typically a fan of more character focused books. I like a little more action, but this is just so beautifully written and there's a little bit of a mystery in it, but it's not like a mystery book. This is just one of those books that the aesthetic that is the cover and the uh, end papers, like that's just the aesthetic of the entire book and it's so gorgeous. Then I have History is All You Left Me because you know I had to put an Adam Silvera book on here because like Adam Silvera owns my entire heart and my tear ducts as well because every single time I read one of his books I am just sobbing and History is All You Left Me is was no different. Choosing between his books was really difficult. Honestly, I think it came down to History is All You Left Me and they both die in the end. But one of the things I really loved about History is All You Left Me is the duality between the sort of really happy, joyful beginning of the experience of like falling in love and first heartbreak contrasted with the there are no words for how devastating this feels kind of emotion in the after sections. It's characters who are complex and good people who make stupid decisions and it's just absolutely heart-wrenching. Then I have another one that was on my list first time around and that is Fangirl. This is one that will never be off this list probably. This might be my number one favorite standalone. Whenever I'm asked to list my favorite books it's always right up there with Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. Reading this book is the first time I ever saw myself in a book. The main character is going off to college and dealing with her anxiety as well as also the fact that her favorite book series, which is basically a Harry Potter type thing, is ending and she's really involved in the fandom. I just feel so connected to this book on like a cellular 
level and I love Kath so much and dear god I want a Levi and I love this book with everything I have. Next is Radio Silence by Alice Osman. This is about a teenage artist who is really really in love with this incredible podcast that's a little dark, kind of surrealist, kind of a bit fantasy. She ends up connecting with the creator of the podcast who turns out to be the twin brother of her ex-best friend and they become friends and they work on the podcast together and it just touches on so many different topics like the main character is bisexual, it explores like gender fluidity and it also trigger warning for uh, parental abuse in this, it does also deal with some of that. It just, it doesn't sugarcoat anything. It was the perfect balance of happy and sad and just, it felt like real life in such a cool way and I loved the incorporation of podcasts into it. Then I have Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Again, this was on my first list. Standalone fantasy novels are not easy to do, but this one is absolutely incredible. I have I actually need to reread it because I haven't read it in a really long time. But there's princes and princesses and magic and explores a little bit more of a dark, political, impoverished side of magic. It explores what happens when the magic that we all rely on disappears and the people we used to worship are now treated like scum. It's definitely an all-time favorite. Then I have Paper Towns by John Green and I know this book is a little bit cheesy and like it's become kind of a cliche and like I know John Green's become kind of a cliche but like I don't care. I still really love this book and I still really love the work that John did in it. It's almost like a response to his first book Looking for Alaska in which he has talked a lot um, in interviews and videos and on Twitter, etc., about how looking back on Looking for Alaska, Alaska is a total manic pixie dream girl. And in Paper Towns, he kind of like addresses that and like breaks down that idea and just like plot wise, it's a really good balance of teenage summer fun that feels a little bit almost heisty with like Margot's big dramatic multi-step plan. There's also a little bit of mystery and then there's also that great like road trip in it. And number 10, which I'm sure will come as a surprise to absolutely no one, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. I love this book so often. It kind of snuck up on me. When I first read it, obviously, like, I enjoyed it. A couple days later, and I like, couldn't stop thinking about it, and I just felt this need to reread it. And I keep feeling that need to reread it. I've reread it like six times now, at least. And every time I notice something new, a new little detail or a cute line in an email from Blue, this is my special edition and not my original copy, but my original copy is all marked up and tabbed and highlighted just because I can't help it. I just love it so much. Becky's portrayal of sexuality is really good, especially considering the fact that she is not a queer author. The romance in it, I die every time and I just realized that it's kind of not a standalone anymore because of Leah. Like Gentleman's Guide, it's getting a companion sequel. God damn it, I'm still counting it. So those are my top 10 favorite standalones. I would love to hear both what you guys think of any of these books in the comments as well as what some of your favorite standalones are. I don't know why, but for the past few months, series have just felt really overwhelming to me, so I've kind of just been sticking with standalones. So if you have any recommendations for good standalones, please do not hesitate to let me know because I would love to hear about them. I love you guys and I will see you later. Bye!